Let's start with a story, an amazing story. When Khomeini, <laughs> what, you, th you, you know him? <laughs> when he gained power in Iran, the Jewish community had no idea what this is going to be. Who is he? What does he want? What's he going to do? He held American hostages, you remember, yeah? And in America, they didn't know what to make of it. He's holding hostages, but he makes no demand. What does he want? So the State Department said he probably wants money. The Pentagon said he probably wants weapons. Everybody had a theory, but nobody knew. So the Secretary General of the General Assembly of the UN, I forget what his name was, he decided he's going to go to Tehran and find out what's going on. <clears throat> he got out of the taxi in Tehran and he was attacked by a mob. The police got him back into the taxi, took him back to the airport, and flew him back to New York. When he got out of the airplane in Washington, he said, they mean it. They don't want anything. They just hate us. So the government, trying to find out what's going on, asked Khomeini if clergy could come visit the hostages for their spiritual needs. And he agreed. So they went looking for non-Jewish clergy. And because there were two Jews among the hostages, they wanted a rabbi. But of course, he wouldn't allow a rabbi from the United States. So they called the rabbi from Mexico, Rabbi Hirschberg. And the UN said to him, would you agree to go visit the hostages? But we can't guarantee your safety. You could become a hostage too. So he said, let me call you back. He flew to New York and he spent more than two hours with the Rebbe. He asked the Rebbe if he should go. The Rebbe said yes and they talked for a long time. As he was walking out of the room, the Rebbe said to him, don't forget to take a menorah, a Chanukiah. And this was in the middle of the summer. He thought, uh-oh. <laughs> Why am I going to need a Chanukah menorah? But he didn't ask. He went back to Mexico. He called the UN to say that he's ready to go. And they told him that Khomeini changed his mind and nobody's going. Months go by and the United States and the UN still don't know what's happening with the hostages. So it came holiday season, if you know what I mean, the end of December. So they asked again, the hostages need their spiritual help. Would he allow the clergy to come? And he said yes. So the UN called Rabbi Hirschberg. The trip is back on. Are you still willing to go? He said yes. He packed a menorah. <laughs> and he landed on the fourth night of Hanukkah. They took him... With two, with two priests, 
They took him into the, or the big room where they were holding the hostages. And of course, they knew that the room was bugged. So they were afraid to say anything. So after a little uh, exchange, how are you? You're feeling well? Everything's good? Yeah. They, they didn't know what else they're allowed to say. So they were a little uncomfortable. And suddenly they hear from the corner of the room, <laughs> the Jewish hostages and Rabbi Hirschberg are lighting the menorah and they're singing. <laughs> so all 50 hostages, with the, with the, they all went to watch the menorah. <laughs> Somehow, the word got out to the Jewish community that a rabbi came, they lit the menorah, they sang a song, and they're, and they're still alive. So maybe it's not so bad. There was a little hope. Friday, was a, the prayer day. And Khomeini was new, popular. So for the prayer, almost a million people came in front of the palace, in the street, to pray with Khomeini. So they set up a big stage for Khomeini and his family, another stage for the ministers, a stage for um, the, the visitors, the guests. And everybody is praying. And then at some point in the prayer, everybody got down on their knees and fell on their face. Everybody, except Rabbi Hirschberg. Sure enough, five minutes later, an interpreter came from Khomeini's box, from Khomeini's platform. Khomeini wants to know why you didn't bow. <laughs> Rabbi Hirschberg said, because I'm a Jew and I'm not allowed to bow to anything or anyone except Hashem. And you're praying in a language that I don't understand, so I couldn't take a chance. The interpreter goes away. Ten minutes later, one of Khomeini's sons comes to Rabbi Hirschberg and says, my father wants to talk to you. And he takes him over to Khomeini's box. And Khomeini says to him, through the interpreter, Tell him that I appreciate his honesty and I appreciate that he doesn't take me for a fool like the ministers who did bow. So Rabbi Hirschberg said, tell your father that if he appreciates, he should give me an appointment. I need to talk to him. So they made an appointment for Monday morning in his villa. That Friday night, Rabbi Hirschberg went to the synagogue in Tehran where Rabbi Ezrachian was the rabbi. The streets were full of people because they heard what happened. He didn't bow. <laughs> he's still alive. He lit the menorah. He's still alive. They all came to see this rabbi. The, the streets were so full that he couldn't get through to the, to the synagogue. Finally, they, they davened, they prayed, and then at the end, he went up to the second floor of the synagogue, and he spoke to the people in the street from the window. Monday morning, he went to the villa, and they spoke all morning, all afternoon, for hours and hours, they spoke about everything. One of the things Rabbi Herzberg told Khomeini is that the Magen David, name of the show, the Magen David that is on the tefillin bag and on the Torah covers 
is not from the Israeli flag. It's much older. Khomeini said, oh, I didn't know. He called in a secretary and he said, send out letters to everybody. I'll call Medina or Medina. <laughs> that any Jew who has a mug in David on his tefillin bag or on the Torah cover should not be harmed. Months later, there was a war between Iran and Iraq. So there was a curfew. Nobody was allowed to be in the streets at night while it's dark. Anyone in the street is shot. It was the time for saying slichot. So you had to be in the streets while it's dark. So Rabbi Ezrachian sent a message to Khomeini that there's a problem. They need to be in the street at night or early in the morning while it's still dark. Khomeini gave out a ruling that any Jew with a mug in David on his tefillin bag is allowed to be in the street at night. <laughs> What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, if you stand up proudly and you don't bow, then even somebody like Khomeini will have respect. What's interesting about this story, if, if anybody asks you, can Purim ever come out on Hanukkah? The answer is yes. Here is a story, a Jew who did not bow in the capital of Persia. And everybody said, you're going to get us in trouble. But because he didn't bow, just like Mordechai, everything came out better. But it happened on Hanukkah. <laughs> so this is the, an interesting example where Purim came out on Hanukkah. If we don't bow, if we are proud, not arrogant, but proud, the whole world has respect. When we are not proud, the whole world loses respect.